What is up, heroes? This is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we escaped from the treatment center, and we found that an ambidex gate had been opened, which tends to happen after the second gate, or after the second uh, chromatic door, right? And we we're going to figure out just what exactly is going on. I have my suspicions, but let's see what actually is going on. What the heck? Somebody else must have opened one of the AB rooms. Why would they do that? Whatever. We should be heading back anyway. I headed for the door. Wait! Yeah, we gotta figure out what to do with Quark, right? Clover's voice stopped me. What is it? I turned to see her pointing toward the wall with the treatment pods. The screen. It changed. What? The screen on the pod's monitor thingy. What changed about it? Oh yeah. It says recent operational records. Interesting. I wonder if this is truly just a coincidence or if this is something that's only possible during an AB game. Kind of creating this tension between how much time do you have to look at this and how much time do you have to get back to actually play the AV game, right? I stepped closer and began to read. What it said was, interesting. Currently treating one subject. That one subject had to mean Quark. This was the pod we'd put him into, after all. I read on. 748, one subject released. 806, sorry about the train in the background. <laughs> Gotta... Gotta love that. Um, 806, one subject successfully restored. 816, cold sleep mode, it disengaged. Beginning restoration of one subject. All prior records have been erased. Authorization, admin. I checked the other pods. They were all the same. I mean, this doesn't tell us a lot of new info from our perspective at the moment, right? 748, one subject released. 806, one subject success successfully restored. What I don't understand is released in this context, right? Released to me means they would have left the pod. But I don't think that's what's being described, right? If the, pod, if the subject has been successfully restored, and then um, the cold sleep mode is disengaged, like, that's what I would expect to be taking place first, and then the subject is released. But, for all I know, it could just be catching up, right? Where it's like, oh, well, person leaves the pod, and then they're like, okay, now, I don't know, 20 minutes later, I guess, it's been successfully restored? I don't know. Whoa, what is all this? I think it's saying that about eight hours ago, somebody in this pod woke up from cold sleep. Well, three people, actually. One for each pod. They all say the same thing, see? What's interesting to me... Hmm... They must have been given some sort of anesthetic in order to not wake up as soon as they, you know... Were, un were thawed, right? As soon as they were restored. That's before we all woke up, huh? I mean, it hasn't been eight hours yet. Yeah. So the three pod people could be three of us. They could have been captured earlier. Don't know how much earlier. Then they were thawed out eight hours ago and carried into the AB rooms. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I really don't think there'd be anyone else in here besides the nine of us. Well, I guess it's actually the ten of us, huh? Yeah. If you count the old woman we found, then it would be ten, wouldn't it? Of course, we know that Dio is the uninvited guest. So who were the three pod people? Don't ask me. How am I supposed to know that? 
All it says is subject. That's creepy. It doesn't tell us anything about who they might have been. Hmm. It doesn't say when they were put into cold sleep either. And this bit, where it says all prior records have been erased. Authorization, admin. That seems pretty suspicious to me. I wonder why they wouldn't just write the time, though. What? Well, you said it yourself. The log says 8 hours ago, not like 9.15 a.m. Those minus signs have to mean this far in the past. Oh, what's funny is I always use dashes as sort of like bullet points, so I thought that was just a series of, you know, bullet points. Who would ever write the time like that? Yeah, that is weird. Maybe Zero Senior doesn't want us to know what the actual time is. Why not? Heck if I know. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm, I'm not really sure why either. Speaking of things I don't know, why did this stuff suddenly show up? It seems like whatever it was that triggered this activated as soon as we opened the door to leave. Wouldn't that mean Zero Senior set it up to work that way? Yeah, but why? That's what I'm asking. What reason would he have to do that? Maybe he wanted us to see the records. Perhaps, but he deleted a bunch of the data. Why? Could it all be a trick? A trick? All of these records are fake. Zero Senior just set it up to mess with us. So you're saying this was just a joke? It's joke. Well, I can't say for sure, but it seems possible. Hmm. I don't know. That seems like a little bit too easy of a cop-out, right? That Zero intentionally set up a fake account for us to find to influence our behavior in a particular manner. That feels a little bit almost like low for Zero, if that makes sense. Hmm. No, it doesn't make sense. Well, let's ask somebody else. Maybe they can think of something. Yeah, you're right. If the AB gates have opened, we need to be heading back to the warehouse anyway. Yeah, and we need to tell everyone what happened with Bork. I'm sure Temyoji is pretty anxious knowing that, well, you're just... Your trio, including Bork, is lagging behind everybody else, right? We double-checked that Quark was alright in his pod, then hurried out of the treatment center. I'm trying to wonder how somebody was killed inside there, right? It couldn't be the treatment pod itself, because the, the cryostasis should work regardless of how active somebody is at the time. So something else had to have been done to the machines or added inside the pod with Dio in order to make it lethal, right? Whether that was some sort of gas, some sort of poison, something like that, right? But anyways, back to the warehouse we go. Uh-oh, that music, though. Is this another warehouse? It looks just like the other one. Hey, could you show me that map? Yeah, I thought so. This one is right under the floor, a warehouse. Huh, so it is. Oh? Are those... Those doors are white. And there are three of them. Okay, let's go take a closer look. You don't have a ton of time though, Sigma. 
I knew it. These are chromatic doors. See? They've got a little box right next to them, just like the others. So these are the third round chromatic doors, huh? I guess we'll be coming back here pretty soon. Yeah. Well, we might not have to. What do you mean? Clover! Clover! We don't... No, 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 no. We're not going to do that to Quark. Come on. We both have 6 BP right now. She's going to be like, I mean, we could both leave if we choose to betray Quark, who's definitely not going to partake in the game, right? Ooh. I mean, I, I get the consideration, right? It'd be silly to not consider the option, but at the same time... Clover, you, you're, you're so devious, right? We've seen it in a few timelines now. Yeah, that's true. So? We're a pair, right? Yeah. And who's our opponent? Quark. Exactly. But he's in the pod right now. So, reminder about the rules. You aren't saying we should pick Betray, are you? Weren't you planning to? I thought that was why you were okay with option C when we were making the groups. Oh, no, 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 that's not. I just, I thought that with Quark's condition, I'd be able to choose ally and not worry about getting betrayed. Good guy Sigma coming through here. It's also, it's also curious, because I remember Tenyoji was very adamant that if Clover was in the group, that Quark would be safe, right? And I wonder, because that clearly isn't applying to the post- escape room safety, right? Even if Clover kept Quark safe during the room, afterwards she's essentially going to commit to killing him, right? Oh, come on, you don't need to lie to me. We're partners. That means we share the same destiny. So let's not hide anything from each other, okay? I will say, Part of what's interesting is her description of partner and what she, how she's approaching that relationship also gives us some insight into how she perceives Alice and her relationship with Alice, right? I'm not hiding anything. Wait, you're serious? You were really going to pick Ally? Whoa, hold on a second there. We might not get another chance like this. Let's say we ally and get up to 8 points. We don't know if we'll be able to get any points next round. For all we know, there might not even be a next round. There are three other people with 6 BP, right? Dio, K, and Phi. This is actually a fairly compelling argument, right? It's kind of a race, to an extent, to see who can get to 9 BP first. And there are quite a few people po- or, you know, poised? Poised? Posed? Poised, I think? <laughs> uh, to, to get to 9 in this upcoming round. What do you think's going to happen if one of them gets 9 points this round? That's not going to happen. Why not? Fai and Luna are playing against Tamyoji. He's only got 1 BP left, though. I really don't think they'd pick Betray. If Tamyoji picked Ally, they'd kill him. The same goes for Dio. He's playing against Alice and Kay, and Alice's BP... No. Don't even think about that. 
I agree. But her BP is the same as Tenmoji's, so unless Dio is willing to kill someone, he won't be able to get his BP to 9. Oh, and we know he is. Then Alice has to vote Betray. Yeah, that is generally the best defensive choice. But if Dio chooses Ally, then... Then K would have 9 BP. Yeah. Jeez. Well, it's just like I said then. If K gets 9 BP, then there won't be a third AB game. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, basically a reminder that people don't have to leave. So you think that K will stay here, even if he gets enough points to leave? No, I don't, because he hasn't <laughs> in other timelines, right? I don't know, but it's possible. No, it's not. Well, we can think about how we're going to vote later. For now, we need to get back to the others. There's a couple things I've got to do when we get back. Fine. Okay, back to floor A then. Let's move. It'll be interesting to see once we're actually in the AB room how things pan out. Just because we know Clover's pretty aggressive and Sigma feels pretty passionate as well. And they haven't really come to terms. I don't know, they're not on the same page, right? Hmm. So I just wonder how heated things are going to get. I turned and headed for the exit. After a few moments, I heard Clover's footsteps following behind me. Can finally go meet up with everyone else. Get a nice tour of the facility along the way. <laughs> Guess I'll get a little bit of water. You know, take care of my voice a little bit. <laughs> All right, it looks like we're finally back. Yotsuba! Clover! Oh, thank goodness you're back. Yep. Are we the last ones? Yes. Hey, where's Quark? Tamyoji's expression was furious. And from the way he was stomping toward me, I felt like I only had a few seconds before I was on the ground with his hands around my neck. I explained what had happened with Quark and the pods as quickly as I could. So, are these pod things really safe? Probably. Probably. I mean, it's not like they're familiar with them, but it's better than, you know, the other way around. No, they're definitely safe. He's fine. Well, are they safe or aren't they? I mean, we have proof that three of the people here are, came from them, right? Look, uh, I'm just worried about him, alright? Can you take me to this treatment center, Clover? Uh... Don't worry. We've still got 20 minutes left. Plenty of time to go have a look and come back. Okay. Come on, then. As soon as she finished, she was off. Temyoji followed at her heels, and in the blink of an eye, they were gone, out the magenta door. Yeah, I mean, 20 minutes, it's reasonable time. It usually takes, you know, three to five minutes to get around places here, I think, or so, from that conversation with the, the security footage before. Alright, you guys got some splaining to do. 
<laughs> I beg your pardon? You opened the AB gates before Clover and I got back, didn't you? I want to know why the heck you'd go and do something like that. Sigma, Sigma take a look. As she spoke, Phi gestured toward the line of AB rooms. Only one was open. It's not like we opened them all up. So you're saying only one person, or one pair, jumped the gun here? Yes. Well, then who was it? Well, I mean... I was gonna say. <laughs> I opened it. Dio, of course, is quick to take credit. So it was you. Figured as much. It's not really a big deal, okay? I mean, you came right back. Yes, Dio. Yes, it is a big deal. Why? If you hadn't made it back by the deadline, you'd just have defaulted ally, as if that's a completely meaningless trivial thing, right? No, not just. Are you telling me you didn't know? Didn't you find one of these notes? What? We found this in the treatment center. There was no such thing in the pressure exchange chamber. I didn't see one in the pantry either. Huh. Well, whatever. You should really probably read it though. Yep, and then, you know, rules about everybody needing to participate. Well, not everybody, but at least one party, one person from each party needs to participate. You get it now? If we hadn't gone back in time, Clover, Quark, and I could have died. And you just... Alright, alright, I get it. Sorry. Cut me some slack though, man, I didn't know. So you wouldn't have opened the gate if you did? Of course I wouldn't have. What the heck, bro? Yeah, like I totally believe you, Dio. You said the room you went into was a treatment center, right? Yeah? If they treat people there, I think they'd have shelves of medicine and stuff. Did you find any Excelivir? You know, Fi, that's, that's a good question. Unfortunately... Something just came up and I am no longer able to record for the time being. So, unfortunately, I am going to have to pause my end of things and I'll be back in just a moment later on when I can record again. So, see you guys in a bit. Did you find any Excelivir? No. It's not really that kind of place. It just had those pods and that was it. Besides, if we'd found anything to cure Radical Six, we wouldn't have put Quark in the pod. I see. Can the pod cure Radical Six? No, unfortunately. How do you know that? Oh, well, it, it told me. Well, it said so on the screen next to the pods. Something about how it can provide relief from the symptoms, but it can't actually cure the disease. That's better than nothing, though. Hmm. Oh, right. There's one more thing about the pause I should tell you. As quick as I could, I explained what the records had said about the pod's occupants and their cold sleep. Cold sleep? Cold sleep? Are you suggesting that three of us were, until recently, cryogenically frozen? If you can trust what we read, yeah. Which of us are the pod people, then? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. They didn't say who they were, or even when they were frozen. So this cold sleep. That means they basically froze the body solid, right? Yeah, 
Not like how a bear or something hibernates, where it just slows way down. Oh, you know what? It's so funny because something like cryostasis, while seeming outlandish, makes a ton of sense in this universe, given everything going on with all ice, right, Alice? Yeah, I think so. So, what would happen to the heart? Uh, what? Wouldn't it stop when you were put into cold sleep? And there's the information that's gonna allow us to get our bracelet off. Oh! So, if we go into cold sleep, our bracelets would come off. Then we can just defrost ourselves right away. You said there were three pods, right? We'd only need to do it three times for the nine of us. Uh huh. I imagine that will work for you, but perhaps not so much for me. The armor. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll figure something out. We should go have a look, at any rate. We'll be able to come up with a plan once we know more. Of course. Can you hear that, guys? It's the sound of another timeline unlocking. What? What do you mean the cold sleep function doesn't work? Uh, I'm sorry. You don't have anything to apologize for, Luna. Zero Senior must have just locked it down. But when Clover and I were here, it worked. Yeah, I remember checking it. Then that Baka set this up. That's low. It's not pleasant, but consider this. We have seen how thorough Zero is. Would he really have left such an obvious loophole? Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. If Zero Jr. heard me, he could have shut it off. Whatever the case, it is an unfortunate outcome. Unfortunate? Really? You sure? Aren't you just a little bit relieved? After all, we were going to get our bracelets off while you were stuck with yours. How could you say that? I would never be so petty as... Before Kate could finish, the announcer's voice echoed through the facility. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. I have completely forgotten, but yes, there is an Ambidex game we need to address. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline is passed, any non-voting parties will automatically allow. I don't know why I let that actually play out. It's been a minute since I've let the announcer fully speak. Time's running out. We should get back, guys. I'm staying here. I can't leave Quark. Are you nuts, old man? You're a solo. Luna and Fi could kill you. Yeah, I know I've only got one BP. Exactly. If you don't vote, you'll default to ally. All they have to do is pick betray. We won't. You staying here won't change our vote. 
Right. We always intend to choose ally. Demioji staying here is just another reason for us to stick to that plan. That's totally true. And also, let's be real, it's Luna we're talking about here. Luna, I think, has only betrayed somebody once, right? Luna has the same number of BP as you, Temyoji. Normally, the safe plan would be to choose betray. Since you'll be unable to betray them, then Fai and Luna can choose to ally without worrying about their own points. Yes. Well, there you go. I trust Fai and Luna. I'm sure they'll choose ally. Yeah, I, I believe them too. Maybe not Fai, but definitely Luna. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay then, Temyoji, you take care of Korn. <laughs> you think I need you to tell me that? I won't take my eyes off of him for a minute. Come on! We don't have much time left. We need to go. Yeah, you gotta, gotta address that vote. We gotta get our, you know, time to throw down with Clover about whether or not we pick ally or betray. Back at the Flore warehouse, we open the AB rooms. What was that sound effect? I don't think we've heard that before. Four minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Alright, Clover. We should probably head in, too. Oh. Okay, and they haven't had any time to discuss ahead of time how they're actually going to vote, right? All right, <clears throat> let's start the Ambidex game. Um, Sigma, do you remember what I said back in the other warehouse? Yeah? You told me we should betray Quark, since we might not get another chance like this. Right? Yeah. Can I, um, take that back? What? Clover wants to take it back. Is she having a change of heart after seeing how Temyoji's acting with Quark? That's a little bit surprising. Huh? I changed my mind a little bit after talking to Temyoji. I think we should choose ally. Hey, that's more than just a little bit. That's like someone trading in a, a Shih Tzu for a German Shepherd. What an analogy, Sigma, what an analogy. Could have come up with anything better? What the heck happened with you two? Did he say something to you? He... Yeah, I'm curious, what happened? I can't tell you. What? Why? I just can't. Wait, what? What's the history between Temyoji and Clover, right? Well, okay, let's backpedal a little bit. Temyoji knows about Akane, right? Temyoji must have some degree of investment in the original 9-9 game, or know some things about its members. And we've seen this in other timelines too, where Temyoji alludes to knowing about Clover and Alice's relationship, their history, their training, or whatever it may be, that Alice or Clover is not super comfortable with, right? And he always says, oh, the other person told me, but it's also very real that he just knew all along. And he probably took the time to tell her, right? Exactly what he knows, why he said before that he trusted Quark to be with Clover. And now, whatever he said is compelling enough that Clover has actually changed her mind on this AV game. You'd laugh if I did anyway. I won't laugh. <laughs> and before Clover's like, actually, Temyoji is one of my fans on OnlyFans. <laughs> really? Promise. Well, I still can't tell you. What? Then what's the point, Clover? Hey, come on, we only got a few minutes. I promised. I told Temyoji that I wouldn't tell anybody. Really? 
Really? So now we gotta uncover this. It's not like we have a whole bunch more to you know, uncover, right? In these other timelines. So whatever it is, it's gotta be deep enough that it's in the end of one of the timelines. All right, fine. I won't ask about it again. But Temyoji doesn't really have anything to do with this, right? Our opponent is Quark. No, he does matter, <laughs> yeah. Please, Sigma, can you not read how invested Temyoji is in Quark? Of course he has something to do with it. Quark is really important to Temyoji. If we betray Quark, we're betraying Temyoji. Come on, don't you remember? When we were going into the red, blue, and green doors, Temyoji said something. I didn't say there wasn't anyone I trusted. There was one person. Clover. I just know that you'll keep him safe. I can't betray somebody who'd say that about me. You seemed pretty ready to betray him back on floor B. Yeah, no kidding. That's because I didn't know who he was. Oh ho, so you're saying you know who Temyoji really is? Well, if what he told me was true, yeah. Interesting, so even though we've gotten the Temyoji ending, I feel like we don't actually really know much about Temyoji. All we know is what role he played in Quark's life. But we don't know what Temyoji's life was up until that point. We know that he knew Akane, we knew that he was involved with like outer space stuff, like the Mars mission, and we know that he eventually ended up in whatever post-apocalyptic world uh, collecting junk to be sold elsewhere, and that he adopted Quark and raised him. But we don't really know much about everything before meeting Quark. One minute remains. Sigma. Please. Choose ally. You aren't going to try and vote yourself? If I try, you'll just throw me off, right? I don't think I'm strong enough to fight you. So... Alright. With that, I turn to face the voting machine. The question was, what would I do? Ally? Or betray? Just as Clover had said, betraying Quark was like betraying Temyoji. That wasn't even taking into consideration that Quark was just a kid. And he was infected with a deadly disease that would almost certainly kill him if we didn't do something. How could I betray someone like that? Only a monster would take advantage of a helpless child for their own gain. On the other hand, what Clover had said in the warehouse on floor B was true. It was unlikely that I'd get a chance like this again. If I chose Betray, then I'd have 9 BP. I would be able to escape this godforsaken hellhole. Ten seconds remain. I mean, you guys know what I'm gonna pick, right? Up until this point, you've been watching the Let's Play, you've seen so many of these Ambidex games, you guys know exactly what I'm gonna pick. So what would my choice be? What would I do? Ally? Or Betray? I chose... Three, two, one, ally. And the game continues. Round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Part of what I'm curious about is when I started this timeline, it looked like it was only really one branch, but this is a pretty big branching point. And I can see it having you know drastically different consequences. Well, actually, this could work out fairly poorly in the sense that if we choose ally and one of the others achieves nine, this could be a bad end, right? But if we choose betray, we may have the ability to prevent the others who 
are the number nine or who achieve nine from escaping or, or something like that. Or if we do get through the number nine door, like in that timeline with Dio, we might learn something new about those who managed to escape with us. Ambidex gate's now opening. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know, guys. Sigma. What did you choose, Sigma? You didn't see me push the button? No. Huh. Well, you'll know in a moment. Let's go. I gave her a light pat on the shoulder and headed toward the wall where the results would be displayed. Results from round two of the Ambidex game will be displayed in the next episode. I know this might actually be a little bit of a short one, but it's been kind of disjointed on my end. I've had a couple interruptions, uh, so I'd imagine it's still long enough that hopefully you guys, uh, your, your taste for Zero Escape has been satiated and you are still hungry for the next episode. Wow, that was, that's kind of cringy, but uh, this was a fun one. I'm really curious to see what that history is between Temyoji and Clover and to see how this information can be utilized in the other timelines, right? If we know that the heart stops when we do the cryostasis, but it hasn't been addressed, right? In that other timeline, it hasn't been talked about. So Zero hasn't presumably turned off that capability. It's something we can utilize in all the other timelines. And especially that one where, well, we need to get the bracelet off of ourselves as we are, you know, literally seconds away from dying. So I'm curious to see how all that pans out. But of course, all that's gonna wait until the next episode. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.